Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. Everybody, I'm back. Good to be back. Good to be back. I do want to go ahead Give a quick follow-up. We're heading into the holiday weekend, but a quick follow-up on a topic we talked about just a few short days ago here on the Aaron Torres Pod and Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel, and it is the recruiting that is being done by the Alabama football program right now. By the way, as always, I've told you a million times, if you're on social media, go ahead and follow our Torres-specific Twitter page, Torres on Bama, for all sorts of late-breaking news because there is quite a bit here as we get deeper into what they're calling a cold summer down in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Okay, so let's really, before we get into what's going on, let's go back about four or five months ago. Because that was obviously that that crazy January day where Nick Saban retired. We all remember where we were, what we were doing. But obviously, once you get past the reality that the, the greatest of all time, in my opinion, I know there might be some old school Bama fans that'll disagree that might watch this video. But when Nick Saban retired, the big question became, all right, well, who's next? And Alabama goes out. Greg Byrne goes out and gets Kalen DeBoer, this rising star, won everywhere he went, most recently at the University of Washington where he played for a national championship in mid-January. But we also know what the narrative was when he got to Tuscaloosa. It was, well, okay. He may have won at the NAIA level. He may have won at Fresno State. He may have won at Washington. He may have had success everywhere that he has gone. But this is different. This is the SEC. This is the South. It just means more. And I had 15 other SEC fan bases. Not saying Bama fans said it, but I had 15 other fan bases telling me there is no chance he's not going to be able to recruit in the South. Well, as I said, about four or five days ago, we did an update. As it turns out, our buddy Kalen DeBoer is doing just fine, okay? And that is because as of about four or five days ago, we followed up a previous story because Alabama at the time had gotten to the number three class in the country according to 24-7 sports, uh, number one in the SEC. Then a few weekends ago, last big weekend of visits in June, they got a commitment from Micah DeBose, the top offensive lineman in the state of Alabama, and Dawson Merritt, a top 50 defensive player out of Kansas. And so at that time, they moved to the number two class. And if that was where the class ended, it would have been a pretty successful first year run for Kayla DeBoer. The problem is my guy just cannot stop picking up recruits and cannot picking up, can't stop picking up major commitments. And again, I know it's not just him. It is his staff, but this is what he's done just since our last update. First of all, one of the players that we talked about on that last update, Dijon Lee, Five-star corner from California, number one rated player in California, according to 24-7 Sports. He commits to the Alabama Crimson Tide. Big-time commitment. This kid was wanted by everybody. Obviously, all of the local schools out there in Southern California. But in addition, offer and a visit from Georgia. Offer from Texas also visited. Offer from A&M and visited. He chooses Alabama 6'4 cornerback, the kind of difference-making NFL body that you need in the SEC. So that has happened since we last recorded. Oh, by the way, after that, Monday, holiday week, everybody else is slowing down. You're chilling. You're giving it half effort at work. Not Kalen DeBoer and his staff. No, 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 no. That is because Caleb Edwards, another four-star from the state of California. He's up in Northern California, tight end. Commits to Bama. Just days after visiting Oregon, he, like all of these other kids, had offers from all the other big boys, Texas, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, Oregon is a burgeoning power in its own right. And then the big one, just a few short minutes ago, midday on Tuesday, Justin Hill down to a Final Four of Alabama, USC, Oregon. And what was the last one? Texas A&M, I believe. I believe Texas A&M was like, oh, was, oh, oh, no, 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 no. I take that back. It wasn't Texas A&M. It was Ohio State. Why is that significant? One, because it's Ohio State. Two, because Justin Hill is a four-star edge 
from the state of Ohio. So I bring it up because Justin Hill, four-star edge from the state of Ohio, he's going to commit to Ohio State. He has to commit to Ohio State. He's an Ohio kid. I know. He commits to Alabama. And with that, I just got one thing to say, people. I just got one thing to say right here, right now, and that is this. Don't doubt the boar. That is right. By the way, we have the t-shirts available. Aaron Torres online.com slash merchandise. Don't doubt the boar. Aaron Torres online.com slash merchandise. This guy is unbelievable. And again, he's a guy that every, not everybody, Alabama fans weren't questioning him. I wasn't questioning him, but it felt like the vast majority of media and it felt like the vast majority of other SEC fan bases we're questioning this guy big time when he got the job. Now, what I'd say is a couple of things. First off, and I've said it a million times, and let's let me do the let me let me even backtrack. Let me be fair. Let's do the whole thing where nothing's guaranteed, everything can change. But as I said last time, and as I say with all these recruiting videos, bottom line is every other fan base wants to tell you in June and July when you're having recruiting success. Oh, let's see what happens on National Sign Day. Well, the bottom line is I've been following this stuff a long time. Unless your seat, unless you, you you get rid of your coach, that's clearly not happening. Or unless your com season completely falls off the, the rails, guys don't really decommit that much. Now, Texas A&M, yeah, when Jimbo Fisher fired, got fired, a bunch of guys decommitted. Florida, yeah, their season fell off the rails. Yeah, those guys decommitted. But for the most part, if your season doesn't completely go off the rails like Florida's last year, if your coach doesn't get fired like Jimbo Fisher, if there isn't a coaching change, the roster, the, the recruiting class largely stays together. Beyond that, I think it's worth noting, I didn't even do a good enough job of setting this up, is that there are still several other players on this guy's recruiting radar, on Alabama's recruiting radar. Caleb Cunningham, five-star wide receiver out of the state of Mississippi. Crystal balls from credible people, Steve Wilt Fong including. Have Caleb Cunningham eventually committed to Alabama? By the way, when I radio with my buddy Ryan Fowler the other day, told Ryan Fowler, I was ready to commit, but I promised myself that I'd go through the process and see all these campuses before I made a decision. So you have that guy, Ty Haywood, one of the elite offensive tackles in the country. Have a couple crystal balls in for him as well. Aiken Deer. Number one running back, four-star, was committed to Ole Miss, decommits. Everybody is saying this guy is going to Alabama. So as good as this class is, it, they ain't done yet. They ain't slowing down. And I think when this is all said and done, this is going to be the number one class in college football and maybe one of the best classes that we have ever seen right up there with Nick Saban's 23 class a few years ago. And, of course, you know, that, that famous Texas A&M class, which did not work out very well. So I'm just sitting here saying, everybody told me this guy wasn't going to be able to do it, but I'll keep going back to what I have said since January. You don't have success at every single level if you don't know what you're doing. Use this example the last time, but when UConn won a national championship in basketball, I asked the AD on the court in Phoenix, I said, what was it about Dan Hurley that intrigued you? He said, Dan Hurley has won everywhere he's gone. One at the high school level, low major level, mid-major level. I knew he was going to win here if we gave him the resources he needed. Beyond that, I said it the other day, Nate Oates at Alabama. He won at the high school level. He won at Buffalo. Of course he's going to win in Alabama. And Kalen DeBoer is the same thing. I know he's never recruited at this level. But at the same time, go back and look. You don't win at the NAIA level when I think if my memory serves me correct, I think he had one full-time paid assistant coach. Everybody else was either volunteers and, and you know, Coach DeBoer was cutting the grass and mowing the lawn and lining the field. You don't do that. You don't have success at every level at Fresno State. By the way, I keep going back to Indiana. The only moment in time basically in my life where they were pretty good was when Kayla DeBoer was the offensive coordinator. And so I just bring it up. He was always going to figure it out. He has brought smart people with him. We've talked about Courtney Morgan, the, um, the very gifted general manager, player personnel guy who was on the flight with him from Tuscaloosa. Smart people hire other smart people to compliment him. The crazy part, 
I really think this thing's just getting started because one, this class ain't done, but two, and this is the important part. And I keep going back to it. Everybody told me Kalen DeBoer wasn't going to be able to recruit, but at least his strengths were on game day. So that's the scary part. Now, listen, I know Alabama's schedule is tough this year at LSU, at Tennessee, uh, Georgia at home, at Oklahoma. But at the same time, remember, Kalen DeBoer's specialty, Kalen DeBoer's gift, Kalen DeBoer's strength is actually between the white lines on game day. So now you're going to give him the most talented roster that he's ever had, and he's recruiting this way. I'll just tell you this. I got bad news for the other 15 uh, fan bases in the SEC. I'm not saying Bama is going to win every national championship from now until the end of time. But for all the Georgia fans out there, the Texas fans out there, the uh, Auburn fans out there, for all of you who thought that this thing was done, that Bama's dynasty was dead, that there was no hope and there, there was no hope for Bama and hope for everybody else, I got bad news for you. Bama ain't going anywhere. And as I've told you before, just remember, don't doubt DeBoer. Do that. You're going to look silly. We'll keep you updated as the summer goes on. Uh, shirts available again at AaronTorresOnline.com slash merchandise. But this guy is just an absolute monster. And Alabama recruiting ain't going anywhere.